Hi everyone, welcome back to class. Uh, today I want to go over the verbs. I'm going to use some categories from Arnold Choi, so have your Arnold Choi book handy. We're going to walk through Exodus 32, 7 to 14. I put most of the verbs up here. There's a couple forms of debar that I left off since they were easy, and also most of the vav consecutive imperfects from Amar. And he said, or and they said, I have not included up here. I included one infinitive uh, form of Amar just to look at it. So I want to walk through these and let's talk um, a little bit about how to uh, how to analyze these. Okay, so our initial verb is vi via devar, and this is a pe'el. And notice the sign of the pe'el is going to be that the shiva under the performative and a doubled second radical, the root or evidence of. This is a strong verb, so we can see that. So this is pe'el, and clearly imperfect plus vav consecutive. And it comes from uh, davar. Now, when you're doing verbal analysis, you do two things. You make a note on the stem, and you also make a note on a verb type. For vav consecutive imperfects, you want to look at 3.5.1, and the top three categories for that are sequential. This is just carrying on the action from before, or it can be uh, narratival, meaning it's starting on a new idea. So oftentimes in English translations, you'll have words like uh, now will show back up in the, in the text. Um, or it can simply be... Um, causation, some of you all have so. Uh, so you want to reflect upon on, uh, uh, on what the most likely version is. This one, probably sequential, just carrying on directly from what happened in the previous paragraph, uh, the idea that Israel's uh, created a golden calf, and now we're going to see the response of that. Uh, now the Pe'el, and for the Binions, you want to look at 3.1, and you can look them up on their own. Typically, pe'el, as we mentioned, is has element of causation built into it. But in this case, um, this is essentially um, the bar is the word at its root means word, and so this is what's known as a denominative. This is a verb built off a noun because you, you don't, there's not really any causation in the idea that he said. And so sometimes when you'll get into one of the derived stems, the nifal, the hifil, the pe'el, it doesn't seem to be any causative force. It's most likely a denominative type of an idea. So uh, don't worry about that too much. That's our first example. Then we get, a, uh, in a row, we get a couple of imperatives uh, uh, from irregular verbs in these next uh, two places. And both of these are call imperatives. So these are both going to be parsed the same. These are call, imperative, and both of these are 2MS. So these are uh, God commanding to Moses. Now the trick with both of these is uh, we only have two constants from the root showing. And uh, this is from halak. Again, we've seen this as oftentimes irregular. Halak acts as though the hay is a, a yod or a noon. Those are the two other roots, first knowns first yodes where you'll lose the first sound. Uh, raid is actually for, is a first yod verb, yarod. So of the two, this one is the more regular one, yarod, original first yod. So just make that in your collection of verbs. Notice that we have a first yod and then halak. We've seen it multiple times. Um, now, how do you analyze the call? The call is either feantive, action, or stative. Both of these go um, and then go down are both actions. So these are both feintive use of the call. And then how does the imperative work? Now for the imperative, so look at 3.3.2 for the imperatives. And these are just the classic uses of the command. Basically, when you look at the categories under imperative, you have command, permission, and promise. The idea versus what's the difference between a command or a permission, it kind of depends on the authority level. So obviously if God is speaking to Moses, these are commands. And so these are pretty easy. So these would be two examples of commands. Um, our next verb, shechet. Uh, now the parsing on this, in some level, the vowel pattern is the clue. This isn't a call. So notice these vowels. If it was you're going to be a straight-up call, you would have expected 
the Kamats and the Patak, because this is third masculine singular. The signal here is that it's a, a guttural, and this is a pe'el. You would have expected a doubling here, but there's no doubling. And if, remember, the he and the chait don't have compensatory lengthening, so this is what's known as virtual doubling. So this is just a pe'el perfect. And what's the function here? Um, this is uh, the idea of kind of intensive. They've become corrupt. They have they, uh, the people have are corrupted, um, uh, um, or they've corrupted themselves even. But this is uh, the strong. So let's look up Pel. So if you go to Pel, go back to three point one. And the idea of they've corrupted. They've put themselves in attempts of, of, of being corruptive. We would call that a factative. There's the, the force in the sense that they have, um, it's an intensification. They've corrupted themselves. So that's the force there. Now, uh, what kind of perfect is this? If you go to perfect, that's going to be 3.2.1. Point and if you look up your perfects in Arnold Choi, this is most likely just a completed action. It's, it's, give, it's, it's describing what they, they, they've corrupted themselves. And which people were they talking about? Notice our next verb. That's easy to spot. This is second masculine singular. This is a perfect. And then what's the root? Um, the root is ayin, lamed, and there's the clue. This is going to be a third hey verb. So this is Allah. And it has an Hey on the front, which is a signal of what? The hifil. So this is a second masculine singular hifil perfect from a law. He went up. And so this is a, a causative side. So if you go to the, again, the perfect here, probably completed action. And what's the force of the hifil? Well, if you go to the list of hifils in 3.1.6, this is a, a, a classic example of um, probably the first category, causative, the people whom you caused to come out. Uh, so that would be a causative on this particular form. Then beginning of verse 8, saru. Hopefully you noticed this one. This is a 3MP, so this is a perfect. So what's left? We have two letters, and then you have a kamats. Uh, this is the typical pattern for what a middle weak verb looks like in the perfect. The middle weak, and those are the uh, verbs that would have a vav, a yod, or a shuruk uh, for, uh, yeah, vav or a yod for their middle consonant. And the, the, this is the paradigm form is like that with the, with the vav in there. So this is a perfect, and this is just a call. The call is feantive, the perfect is completed. They have turned aside, and we get my hair. Now, my hair, notice this form. This is, you may have had a little bit of trouble parsing this. The vowel pattern helps. Would have expected doubling. This is a pe'el. And in this case, if you look at the paradigm that I gave you, uh, this particular sheet, notice the infinitive construct well, in the imperative, they all they look they look very similar. This is an infinitive by John Cook's words, but we'll call it an infinitive construct for the purposes of um, Arnold Choi. So when you look up the infinitive construct, again the the pel is probably factative. They've hastened, turn aside, hastening. So this is like intensifying. And now, how is it? What's the function of this infinitive construct? Look at 3. Point, I believe it's going to be 3.4, 3.4.1. And if you look at um, some of the initial uses here, what this would, would be would be a nominal function where it's actually essentially just complementing what came before it. And so it's functioning more like, a, almost like a gerund in the sense that it's, um, you would make it a, a plural a, a word. So they have hastened themselves quickly. It's almost adverbial in this case. 
And so that's a little difficult, but that's a PAL infinitive construct. Now, next verb, there's your three MP suffix. Now, notice this vowel. This is a hyric yod written defectively. So this is actually your first common singular. And this is a perfect, because we know it from the tav. Now, what's left? Again, this is another third. Hey, this is from tsava, command. And then what's the root or the stem? You notice you have a doubled radical. So this is a pe'el. So a pe'el perfect, first common singular with a third masculine plural ending, which I commanded them. Again, factative, uh, in this case, or, or maybe a denominative verb, the perfect, it's feantive, and we're done with that one. Asa. Notice the ending. This is 3MP, perfect. Again, hopefully you recognize the root, but third haze, the final hay elides, disappears when you put a vowel on it. So this is um, perfect call from asa to do, they have done. The call, feantive, and the perfect, this is just completed action again. Now here's the crazy verb in this thing. Notice we have a vav consecutive imperfect, so we know that. It's imperfect plus vav consecutive. There's the, um, and it's third masculine plural. So then you have all these crazy letters. Um, this is a stem that we don't talk about. This is the Hishtafel stem. It's sometimes abbreviated the H T Sheen stem. So don't want you to stress out about this one because you don't see it very often. And the Arnold Choi book doesn't actually say anything about it. It's kind of a like an HTD, but with a hit, with kind of like a hiff feel. It only happens in this one verb. And again, there's two letters left. This is a third hey. It's from ha, va. And this verb means to prostrate, prost, I keep saying prostate, that's bad. Prostrate oneself, bow down, worship. And so this is, they have worshiped. So what kind of vav consecutive imperfect is this? Notice to analyze the Vav consecutive, you're going to go to 3.5.1, and you pick the category based on what comes in front of it. So there's just been this whole description of what Israel's done. So they've done all these things. They've turned aside quickly, and they worshipped. So this would probably be sequential. And what's the force of the HT sheen? In, I think this is an intensification. We just call it causative and leave it at that. Okay, our next verb. Uh, actually, a, 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 a completely regular verb. We see the vav consecutive, so we know we have imperfect plus vav consecutive. Notice how it's just carrying on the action, so that's a sequential. Okay, it's third masculine plural, and then we had the whole root is there. We're saying praise the Lord. This is just a call. Zabahu or, or yaz, Yizbehu, um, and they sacrifice. So the call is feantive, and the vav consecutive and perfect is sequential here. All right, let's keep it going. Last verb of verse 8, he luka. Um, notice we have a second masculine plural suffix on there. The Sharuk tells us it's third masculine plural, and this is just going to be a perfect. You might think this is the root, but the hey is our signal of the hiphil. So this is a third masculine plural, hiphil, perfect. We knew the perfect from the Sharuk. And what's the root? And then this is another third hey verb. We've seen this. This is from Allah. So again, notice the third, the, the third hey elides when you add the vowel to it. And so the hiphil here is they have caused you to go up or who has uh, gone up or they sent up. Um, so this would be caus causative with the hiphil and the perfect, again, is going to be completed action. <clears throat> Ra'iti. 
Okay, there's our first common singular, so we know we have a perfect 1CS. Okay, what's the root? Well, notice the third hey, this is from ra a. This is just a call from ra a. I have seen. So, uh, what kind of perfect is this? It's another feantive, I have seen. And what's the force of the perfect completed action? Which moves us to verse 10. Now, this is irregular. This is from the verb nun, shiru, chait. And it's a little hard because it looks like it could be a nifal because you have this doubling of the nun, right? Um, but what this actually is, um, is the hifil. This is an irregular form. This is the hifil. Um, the hifil imperative. This is God speaking to Moses. So the imperative is going to be command. So it's like, leave me alone. Cause me to be alone, right? And the hifil is going to be causation. Now, the next few words that we're going to have, notice these next three. This is a sequence of jussives and cohortatives. Um, jussives and cohortatives look a lot like regular imperfects. The cohortative will often add a hey at the end, uh, but that's a third hey anyway, this particular verb. So it had been there anyway, and because it's adding a, a, um, a suffix, we don't see it here. And the jussive looks just like an imperfect. Um, and so this, what do we have here? We have a vav that's adding and is, is added here. Um, we have a vav consecutive on these cohortatives, right? So it's not really vav consecutive in this case. This is the sign of, uh, of uh, a cohortative. So, but we do have, so we have leave me alone. Chara is the root. This is a third hey verb. Again, notice on third hey that you'll get a pock of patient. There's complete loss of the last sound. Third masculine singular. So it's let my anger burn. And I, this is from kala. Notice this vowel here. Uh, this is pe'el. First common singular. And this is a cohortative. So let's look up cohortative, and we can also look up justice for that much. And this last one here, this is another cohortative, first common singular. This is a call. This one is pe'el. And this is a call here as well, this justive. So let's look at these right in a row. So let's look up justive. So let's look up the um, by the aspect again. So this is going to be 3.3.1. Um, let my so that my anger may burn. Uh, let my anger burn. Um, this would be kind of the wish. So this would be a justive of wish, and then the cohortative 3.3.3. And I may consume them, and I will make your name great. These are all wishes that are listed here. So we have a justive that has the wish force, and then the cohortatives have the wish force. Now, in this case, the, um, the call, this would be feantive. The pe'el, consume, this is, this is going to be that factative idea in call feantive. On the say, which moves us then to verse 11. Um, verse 11, Bob consecutive. Um, in this case, <clears throat> so we're going to have Moses. This is from Kala. Notice the form there. This signal here, when you have a Shiva under the performative, that's a sign of the Pe'el. So we have imperfect plus Vav consecutive. Now, the Pe'el here, Moses implored. That's a, that would be factative. 
Now, the significant thing here is what's the force of the Vav consecutive? Notice God just gave Moses this wishes. So how does Moses respond? This is probably an example. If you look at 3.5.1, this would be a place where in the narrative you could probably insert the word so. So Moses implored. So this would be a case that of this functioning as consequence. There's a little bit of causation that's built in here. And then this is going to be adjustive. Actually, I'm sorry, this is just a straight up imperfect. This is a call, imperfect, 3MS. Um, call is going to be action. He's saying, why will your anger burn? And if you just look up the straight imperfect, 3.2.2. Call again is feantive. And this would just be a straight up um, future sense. Why will your anger burn? The people, and here we have second masculine singular. There's the root. Remember this thing. This is a. This is the. You see the um, whole and vav shows up in place of the original yo. This was a first original first vav, that in all original first vavs in the lexicon, come out as first yodes. But uh, and this is going to be a hifiel. So second masculine singular hifiel perfect, whom you brought out. So this is the, the force of the hip feel is causation or causative, and the perfect is another feantive. Verse 12. Okay, this is the one example of Amar that I put in here. Again, when you find a verbal root that has a lamage, you want to think infinitive. This is call. The call is feantive. And what's the force of the infinitive here? Look up three point. Four point one, and this is probably an example of um, this is a fairly common use, and I would say that that this one with the llama on the front of it here would best be called specification saying by saying. And here's a, this is this verb is very similar to this one. It's the same root. This is another hifiel, um, hifiel perfect, three ms with the third masculine plural uh, suffix on it. Again, the same thing. It's causation and feantive. Again, look at when you see that holdem vav where you'd expect the first consonant of a root. That's a signal for an original first vav which in our lexicons, you're going to know that as a first yod verb. All right, laharog. Again, if you see a verb form with a lamed, you're thinking infinitive. This is the classic form of a call. The only difference is, is you have a first guttural, so you get an A-class vowel instead of a shava, and that opens up the vocalization. So the call, again, feantive. And what kind of infinitive construct is this? This can be purpose or result, right? It's, it's in order to kill them. And then we get another infinitive construct. This is that verb kala that we saw earlier. So this is a pe'el. Infinitive construct. Again, when you see lamas on the front of verbs, you want to automatically think infinitive construct or what Cook calls infinitive. This has the three MP suffix, so this is another pe'el. This is that factative idea, to consume, and then the infinitive constructs function here is purpose in order to consume, and the suffix is the object them. So now Moses is actually pleading with God, and we get two imperatives in a row. So this is a call imperative from that root, so turn. Repent. And so this is kind of God, Moses is actually having uh, some audacity here, giving God an imperative, right? And so, you know, what's the force of what's the force of a command when when a person is actually giving it, right? In a sense, um, uh, 
Moses is really pleading, so you can call that permission, or you could audaciously say Moses is, is commanding God now. So return, repent even, right? And um, relent. This is the word that's fairly significant in this case. This is a um, nifal. This is the nifal uh, imperative form from nacham, the verb to be sorry. Um, what's the force of this? Is, again, this is another imperative, nifal. So Moses is calling on God to be sorry. And then he says, remember, another imperative, a call imperative. And by form, this could have been an infinitive construct, but context suggests this is another imperative. Remember all the covenants, right? And then which you swore, second masculine singular, nifal, perfect. And how do you swear? Swear is more of a reflexive action, right? You swore to yourself. That's what swearing is. Then we got our bay. There's your root. First common singular. Sorry for the delay here. So let me look up one thing. There it is. I'll make sure. Yeah, so this is a hyphial. You've got the A-class vowel and evidence of an I-class vowel. So this is a hyphial imperfect. So this is has the future that I will make. It's got, Moses is reminding them of their promises. Hyphial. That's causative. Atin, there's, again, this is from Natan, should be beginning to be kind of a popular, famous verb. He's noticed the, the um, doubling dogish. You might think this is from all of Tain Noon, but that root doesn't exist, so that makes this a first common singular imperfect marker. And then from Natan, so this would be another uh, future for the imperfect, and what kind of, um, uh, of call would this be? This is feantive, I gave. And they will inherit. Okay, there's your third masculine, sing masculine plural for the perfect. And this is just a call. And notice this is a perfect plus vav consecutive. So this is going to carry on this, uh, the, um, the sequence. So it, this is I will give. So this is and they will inherit. In the last verse, Bob consecutive, look up 3.5.1. This is probably consequence. So Yahweh was sorry or repented or relented. Notice these, doubled first radical of the root and a kamatz under there. That's a signal that we have a nifal. So this is nifal, imperfect plus Bob consecutive. Perfect plus Bob consecutive is probably consequence here. And the nifal, again, reflexive. And I just put this one up because it's easy. PL, perfect. This is a, the PL here is denominative. Perfect is feantive. He said, yeah, notice this, uh, the Lamed Oat ending. That's uh, almost an automatic, that's a call infinitive construct from a third hay verb, from asa. I just want to put that up there. That one's pretty easy. The call is feantive. The infinitive construct is probably purpose. Again, I know the board looks quite scrambled now. I hope this walkthrough helped you. Again, notice what I was doing for each verb. I went to Arnold Choi and I said something about the binion or stem and something about the verb type. Try to do that in your work, and that's going to be the next way we're going to upgrade things. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm Brian Russell, and it's my privilege to be your professor.